our Barry County Science Festival, Reimagine STEAM. Uh, this is normally events that we hold in the spring. So I'm very glad we are able to still do this this year. Um, our next presentation today will be beginning birding with the Barry County Bird Club. Hi, I'm Ann Klein with the Barry County Bird Club. I want to talk to you about birding basics. Most of you have probably heard the term bird watching. We usually think of that as watching the birds in our backyards and feeders. Some common birds that you might see at your bird feeder are the northern cardinal, the blue jay, the white-breasted nuthatch, and the tufted titmouse. But there are some birds that won't come to your bird feeder because they don't eat bird seed. For example, the bald eagle, the eastern kingbird, the common yellow throat, or the turkey vulture. So to see some of these exciting and interesting birds, we need to venture out into different habitats and look for these birds. When we go to explore different habitats looking for birds, it's best to use a pair of binoculars. Using binoculars will make a bird that seems really far away look much closer. Then we can see the bird's shape and color better to help us identify which bird we're looking at. Birds can be found in many urban areas, including backyards and city parks. Even cemeteries are a great place to look for birds. Anywhere where there are trees and a bit of grass, you can find birds. Some common city birds are the morning dove, the house sparrow, the chimney swift, and the house finch. Another habitat you can visit is a grassland. Birds eat the insects and seeds that are found in the deep grass. Some birds even nest on the ground in the grass. Some common grassland birds are the Eastern Meadowlark, the American Goldfinch, the Field Sparrow, and the American Kestrel. Another great place to visit to see different kinds of birds is a pond, a marsh, or a river, also known as wetlands. In wetlands, birds feed on aquatic insects, small fish, and frogs. Birds that you might find at a wetland include the red-winged blackbird, the tree swallow, the great blue heron, and the green heron. Another habitat we can visit to find some different birds is the woodland habitat. Birds here feed on the many insects that live on the leaves and bark of the trees and the forest floor. Some examples of woodland birds would be the scarlet tanager, the wild turkey, the oven bird, and the pileated woodpecker. A final habitat we can visit to look for different birds would be one of the many lakes that we have here in southwest Michigan. Birds that we might find at a lake would be the mallard, the wood duck, the Canada goose, the belted kingfisher, or the bald eagle. We're fortunate here in Barry County because we have two lakes where we have nesting common loons. This is the farthest south of any nesting loons in Michigan but the lakes need to be very quiet with very little boat traffic so that the loons won't be disturbed. A favorite time of year for birders is spring when many of the birds that travel south during the winter return. A favorite group for birders are the wood warblers. Wood warblers are small colorful birds that eat insects. May is our favorite birding month as these wood warblers return to show us their beautiful and colorful plumages. Some examples of the wood warblers are the yellow warbler, the American red start, the black-throated green warbler, and the cerulean warbler. All four of these nest right here in Barry County. 
In fact, the Cerulean Warbler is locally abundant and Michigan Audubon hosts a Cerulean Warbler weekend in June that highlights these special birds. At this weekend festival, experienced local birders act as guides to take out folks from all over the country to look for these special and hard to see warblers. We sometimes think of migration as only a spring event, but most birds travel south in the fall. In the fall months, birders enjoy looking for birds like the sandhill crane, the wood duck, and the bufflehead, which use the area to feed and rest as they travel south. Many of our lakes and wetlands are important stopping grounds for these birds. One favorite place in Berry County where we like to look for migrating ducks in the fall is the Paul Henry Trail in Middleville. This paved trail crosses a wetland and runs alongside the Thornapple River making excellent wetland habitat to find bird species. Joggers, strollers, bikers, and birders alike all share this wonderful green space. Every season for a birder brings its special bird highlights. Birding is a fun outdoor activity where you get lots of fresh air and exercise. And you see lots of neat things besides just birds like beautiful wildflowers and wildlife. It's like an outdoor scavenger hunt just waiting for you. To get started, put up bird feeders and feed the birds at your house. If you live in an apartment, check with management first. Get a field guide to help you identify the birds. Pocket field guides are another option as well as phone apps. Find a pair of binoculars to help you see birds better. Younger kids can use inexpensive plastic beginner binoculars. Older children could use 7x35 or 8x42 magnification. Join a local birding group such as the Barry County Bird Club and go on field trips with them. It's always easier to learn with a mentor and clubs have experienced members who are happy to share and teach new members. Get a copy of the Thornapple Birding Trail brochure which highlights 22 of the best public birding sites in Barry County. The brochure has a map of locations as well as a description of the birds you might find there and the best season to visit, as well as amenities that are available. The Berry County Bird Club has a Facebook site with bird-related posts, or contact the Berry County Bird Club at berrycountybirders at gmail.com and ask to join their mailing list to be notified of upcoming birding activities. Have fun and hope to see you outside. Doug, if I can get you to share your, uh, sorry, t uh, turn on your video as well as your audio. Um, Unmute myself. There you go. And if you can just do the one, that would be great. We just want to at least hear you. Okay. Awesome. Hey, there we are. Oh, there you are. Great. Wow. Um, Looks like so, I'm up on Isle Royal today. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Doug. Doug is a member of the Barry County Bird Club, uh, which we just learned about, which was wonderful. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. 
Um, so we don't have any questions yet coming in from Facebook. So feel free if you're on Facebook with us, feel free to put in some questions. Somebody does say beautiful, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. But my question for you, you did mention phone apps in the video. Mm -hmm. Are there any phone apps that you would recommend to people if they wanna get started birding? I'll show you the one that I use. I use one by David Sibley. Um, see if I can get to the start page of it here. Well, this kind of shows it a little bit. Uh, okay. Your virtual, there you go. If you put it over your face for a second, we might be able to see it without your virtual background. Oh, there it is. There we go. It's an app called uh, Sibley Birds, uh, S-I-B-L-E-Y. It's written by David Sibley. And uh, that's the one that I use most of the time. I used to use, you know, regular paper um, books. Let me see if I can get this to come through here. Oh, you're, you, we're losing you. <laughs> it's your background. It's okay. Yeah, it's, there, there we, we are. Well, more or less, well, but it's a Sibley book. Here. It's okay. Anyway, typical books. Yep. Uh, but the Sibley guide is nice because you can bring this in the field with you on your smartphone. And the nicest thing about it is it's, it has... Um, everything that the book has plus it also has songs and calls of all the birds and to be a really skilled birder and to help find birds easier it helps if you know the songs and calls of the birds because each bird has a distinctive and unique song and uh, those songs will help uh, you know show you where the bird is and help you find birds a lot easier plus identify them too I was going to say, that's a really good point. I guess in books, you don't get those bird calls, so you can't really learn right, those bird right, calls as well. Right. That's a great point. So, Thanks. you know, when I was a young man, they, they had, you know, 12-inch LP records with bird songs on them, and I used to learn them that way. And then, of course, that graduated to uh, cassette tapes and then compact discs. Well, now you can have it right on your phone and bring it in the field with you, which is sure a lot easier than lugging a Victrola around the woods with you. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> much so. Yeah. Well, I do have a question from Facebook. Uh, Sarah okay. asks, uh, how would you recommend attracting woodpeckers to your feeders? I think suet is probably the best way to do that. You can buy suet at places like uh, Ace Hardware, TSC, many grocery stores sell suet. It's basically a cake of kind of a fatty material with the different types of seeds and so embedded in it. And if you put that up on uh, next to a tree or on your bird feeder or whatever, woodpeckers just love that stuff all year round. Could you make your own suet, Doug? Um, you probably could. Yeah, there's probably recipes for it online somewhere, I would say. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, would a good way uh, people use, uh, they'll take like a log and drill some large holes in it and fill those holes with peanut butter. And uh, woodpeckers and many other birds, too, will come and eat that peanut butter. Ah, so not just humans like that peanut butter, right? <laughs> right. That's right. Yep. Very cool. Um, do you have any favorite places that you would recommend in Barry County or even in some southwest Michigan that you would say that these are the places that if you really want to go birding in the fall, these are great places to visit? Well, I think Pierce Cedar Creek Institute is a wonderful place. They have miles and miles of trails all kinds of different habitats, which produces all kinds of different birds. Uh, it's a wonderful place. Uh, we've seen, oh, I wanna say about 185 different species of birds at Pierce Cedar Creek over the years. So it gets a good variety of birds there. Uh, also the Paul Henry Trail in places like Middleville, um, nice easy access paved trail there. Um, uh, lots of uh, interesting habitats there with river on one side of the trail and a marsh on the other side. And, then you kind of get more into a woodsy habitat. Um, Charlton Park is another good place. They've got trails and a variety of habitats. You can look over the lake for some of the waterfowl, uh, you know, in the winter and so forth. And then the woods, of course, have all sorts of different birds and so in them. So, but really just about any place that has, you know, brush, trees, um, parkland, uh, things like that are, are good places for birding or even right in your backyard. Yeah, I think that's what I like the most about birding is that you can do it from almost anywhere, which is great. Right. Yep. And it really enhances your travel too. Like if you travel, I know people aren't traveling much these days due to COVID, but if you travel around the United States, uh, you get just a little bit away from Michigan and there are different birds that live in different parts of the country. For example, if I go out to California on a business trip, there's just hundreds of different species of birds out in California that we don't get here in Michigan. 
So it really enhances, makes your travel more interesting too. Doug, what's the farthest place you've traveled for just a bird though? Uh, farthest place I've gone is down in central Mexico. Oh, wow. But there are what a lot of birders who, for? there are birders who travel all through Central and South America, people who go to Australia, New Guinea, uh, Southeast Asia, Africa. Um, there are some people that, uh, if you've got the time and money to travel, you can see thousands and thousands of different kinds of birds. Well, bringing it back to Michigan, what's your, mm -hmm. okay, I know it's like picking your favorite child, but what would be your favorite no. fall bird that you really look for every fall? I know, oh, maybe oh I could my. give you top three. <laughs> yeah, um, this year we've had a kind of an influx of a bird called pine siskin. Mm. It's a small bird. Uh, it's really exactly the same size as an American goldfinch. They look a lot like the goldfinches this time of year except that they're all streaky on their backs, their breasts, their head. It's just a streaky looking goldfinch. And that's a pine siskin. It's kind of a bird we get here in the fall. Um, another favorite would be a white crown sparrow. They come through here in migration, both spring and fall, but we, we get them this time of year. It looks like a sparrow that's wearing a bicycle helmet. That's kind of a black and white striped bicycle helmet. So if you see those in your yard, that's called a white crown sparrow. And um, there's sandhill cranes moving through right now. They, they nest to the north of us, they move south, uh, hang out in some of the wildlife refuges and eventually go all the way down to the, you know, the southern states for the winter. But uh, if you drive around out in the country, some of the farm fields are just full of sandhill cranes right now. And they're big, tall birds. I mean, sometimes you think they're deer, they're that, they're that large. So they're fun to watch this time of year too. And they also make a lot of sound, if I remember right. <laughs> they do, they're noisy, yes. Yeah. So, so Doug, I have one last question for you. Um, mm -hmm. So Barry County Bird Club, I know in these times, thing, it's sometimes difficult to get together, but are you guys still getting together and can people still join you for your, your outdoor excursions? Yes, they can still join our club. We are doing some out, outside field trips. Uh, you know, we try to practice social distancing and stay outdoors and, and so, but uh, so yeah, our indoor meetings are, you know, on, on hold for now. Uh, but we do have outdoor field trips. So we may go to a, a place like uh, Pierce Cedar Creek. I think we were there a couple years ago, or a couple weeks ago, I'm sorry, and uh, did a field trip there. And uh, so yeah, we're always uh, uh, looking forward to meeting new members and we love teaching birding to uh, beginners. So uh, I'd encourage everyone to get a hold of us uh, with uh, the contact information you had earlier on the on the page there. And just to remind us, uh, what is the, how do we get a hold of you? Is just the Facebook page, is the link there, or how do, what is no, that Facebook, address again? Yeah, the Facebook page, uh -huh, the Facebook page, Berry County Birders would be a good way to get a hold of us. Mm -hmm. So just and give us an email address or a phone number or something, we can get in touch with you that way. Sounds great, Doug. Thank mm -hmm. you. I know I learned a lot. I'm so excited to start looking for some more birds. Uh, and we will have this posted later. So thank you so much okay. for joining us, Doug. You're very welcome.